Welcome to Blind Owl Bushcraft and Survival. Hi, welcome to Blind Owl Bushcraft and Survival. My name's Dan. I'm here in the Philippines. I've got a customized bolo knife here that I had made when I first got here in the Philippines. Within a week I had this knife. Uh, I've modified it many times since then. I've made the blade a little thinner this way. Made it much thinner this way. It was a one kilo knife when I first started. And now it's about, which is 2.2 pounds. Now it's about 1.75 pounds. It's heavy, but it's not too heavy. It's got a real nice edge on the right side. The left side is flat, so it's a chisel grind type knife. It's Philippine style. It has a full tang and it has guava wood slabs on there that started to come loose after a while, so I put some of that fiber fix epoxy tape on there and it worked real nice. And the, the steel of this is um, spring steel, which would be this is this this right here came from a Mercedes Benz uh, van from Korea and I just just looking at it, I just did another video and I brought this out and I just recently put on a vinegar patina I wrapped the blade up with like three layers of, of toilet tissue then I soaked it down with vinegar then I wrapped it tight with saran wrap and normally I let these go 36 hours at the minimum sometimes a couple days this one I only let go about 12 or 13 hours and it still came out real nice real nice and dark and today I just noticed that it's just kinda dry it's getting slightly chalky here so today is the day I'll cook, throw a quick coat of oil on it and I'm using fake singer oil, Chinese singer oil everything here comes from China but it's a pretty nice light oil and all I'm going to do is just put a just a little bit on the blade, a little bit on the other side, and I'm going to take a piece of cotton. I like cotton rather than paper towels. I'm just going to rub it in. Watch the edge because the edge is shaving sharp. I got a flat spot here in the bottom too. You always make sure you get that. need to make a new sheath for this one. I have a PVC sheath for it, but it doesn't, it's not long enough. It's just it was a piece of scrap that I had. That's not too bad. Now it's got a little bit of shine to it again. A little bit of black came off on it. But even with the patina on a knife, you still need to, to oil them up all the time, especially a carbon steel knife like this. This is, again, spring steel. It's true 5150 steel. I don't know, but this is what this is from a spring on a vehicle. Here it's called Mollier steel. And all the better knives are made with it. Uh, you've seen some of my videos with the hundreds of knives on the tables. I would say 90% of those knives are not spring steel. I would say most of them are just bar steel. And they claim that they're, they'll tell you that they're Mollier steel. But uh, as you go when they have a uh, uh, the maker's name stamped in the the blade, that usually used to always signify uh, the good spring steel. But nowadays it's hard to say. Everybody's out to make a buck, you know. And they, <laughs> you'd think you would think buying spring steel from the junkyard would be cheaper than buying bar steel, but the bar steel is much easier to work with. So I don't know. What, I don't know why they do it, but I, I really like this one because it's a. You don't see you don't see full tang knives here in the Philippines. All the knives here have a little bitty rat tail in them. It goes back about two inches, and then that gets driven into a handle, usually heated so it'll burn its way in, and that's it's it's okay. But if you're using it for chopping wood and stuff like that, after about an afternoon of chopping, the handle's loose and you have to replace it. So 
again this is the same this is the same handle I've had on this knife and the same everything on this knife for next month will be 19 years so it's a fan it's a fantastic knife I really like I really like the fiber fix though you want know, you see that look look for that like at Lowe's or someplace like that and it's just a nice type of fiberglass epoxy tape it wraps around and hardens. It's smooth, but it still has texture to it. And you got the, the layers of stuff for a little bit of grip. And again, this stuff here has taken abuse. I mean, I've used I use this knife all the time. This is my main knife, and it still it still looks as good. It's a little dirtier than it was when I first put it on there. It was real black, but uh, other than that, it's fantastic. And uh, again, the blade. The blade is so nice. I've got another one exactly like this that we made the same day out of the same spring, the other side of it. And it's it's a solid kilo knife, 2.2 pounds. It's really good for chopping wood, splitting wood, batoning wood, stuff like that. But you can't use it for weeding because it's just too darn heavy. For this one, this one's a nice trade-off. It's not too light, it's not too heavy. You can still chop wood really good this is a thousand times better than any any hatchet because it has an edge on one side and this is a right-handed knife so it's flat on the left side when you slam it down into a tree this flat edge just digs into the wood it, it will never kick I've never had it kick off ever in all the times I've used it where a hatchet will kick off a lot of times and I, I always thought hatchets are kind of dangerous plus you have this great big long edge here to cut with so there's no way you're gonna miss anything nick something and have the axe head come flying at you now will this do the same thing as a say a, a three to five pound axe absolutely not it, it will it will do the same thing a three pound axe or five pound axe will do it'll take a really really long time uh, i used to have a real nice five pound axe back when i lived in wisconsin and uh i was cutting down well what were they about 16 to 24 inch oak trees and oak trees are it's amazing once you start cutting into them it's just like stone and uh, what I would really do with most of them was I would cut a ring around the bot the base of the tree about two foot up in the air I cut a four inch ring cut the bark all the way off four inches all the way around and then I do like 20 trees every summer and then not that winter but the next winter I'd come back and cut those trees down because they would stand for a year, a year, a year and a half, and be completely dry and dead. When I cut them down, and when they hit the ground, the bark would just fall off, and that was a fantastic way to do it. I think, I think it's an old Indian trick, if I'm not mistaken, but it's something I just picked up on my own. I, I, I called it ringing trees, but I don't know. There's some, probably some special name for it. I have no idea. But that's a really nice knife here, I'll tell you that, guys. Got a fluorescent light above me, it's pretty bright, so I'm looking in the, the monitor two foot away, and I don't, know, I don't know what you can see. But it's, it's, a, it's a great knife. So that's all I got for now, guys. Take care. Hashtag 22 a day no more. Go out, have some fun. Watch your six really close. Be extra careful out ice fishing and stuff like that. Be really careful with winter. You got another solid month of bad winter, and most of March can be winter too. You know that. So be extra careful. Make sure you got a couple blankets in your trunk of your car. Some water probably be a good idea, and a couple cans of Sterno. A little Sterno burner be a good idea, just in case you need it. And I'd, I'd also have a, I'd also have 50 foot of rope in my car too, in case I need to get pulled out somewhere, or I need to pull someone else out. But take care. Thanks for watching. Be safe, guys. <laughs>